to today's broadcast. <laughs> So let's, uh, we've been talking about healing faith, and let's, uh, let's do this. For the sake of time, I'm not going to do any review. But let's do Isaiah 6. Let's go there. Let's go to Isaiah 6. You know, you get the CD and check out the different levels of healing that we've talked about. Um, so, yes, his body's healing, but <clears throat> talked about quite a, bit, quite a few different levels of healing, and we'll get into a little bit of, uh, I believe today, some of the hindrances to our healing. But Isaiah 6, and we'll start here at verse, verse 10. It says, make the heart of this people it says, make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. It's, it's so interesting because it's referenced in the, in the New Testament, too, that conversion is what takes place for healing. And it was saying, you know, of course, Isaiah was just talking about um, uh when he was called and he was sharing how he was called and, and of course God was calling him to a people, how the people were operating. And he was said, you know, allow them basically when people are flowing rebellious, uh, it's almost like turn them over to a reprobate mind, allow them to, uh, uh, when it says fat, if you think about just to, to consume themselves, uh, also in gluttony, it says, but, but what happens when we consume ourselves with the world or consume ourselves with self or we're feeding our flesh, we lose our ability to see and to hear. We impair our processor. And it says if, if, if our processor is impaired, we can't receive healing. It's hard for us to receive healing because the healing is coming from who? It's coming from God. It's coming from the heavenly. It's coming from the supernatural realm. And it's hard to process things for the supernatural realm when you train yourself Natu just just to uh, respond naturally. So it was, it was everything I do is retraining myself. You know, uh, I was, was talking to my wife about this with a one night with a king coming up because I know, especially after today, I know all types of powerful things are going to happen. Yeah, I, I was I was in my mirror laughing a little while ago. I was like, really? So I guess one night with a king is going to be powerful based on some things that's been taking place. But the interesting thing is the only thing that gets in the way of, of God's power is when we get in the self. That's the only way. And you notice when there's major events and God's trying to do stuff, people get in the flesh. And I noticed something else. People start to assess their service when there's a major event. You ever, you ever see that? I, I haven't been around nobody. No one has told me nothing. But I've been, I was the point person at a large ministry for every major event. And you know why I was allowed to be the poor person? Because I didn't get in the flesh. And you know what I spent most of my time doing? Getting people out of the flesh. And you know the people, the most of the people I was trying to get out of the flesh was the top leaders. Like, and, and, and guess what? And the top leaders that were closest to the pastor. But so, and what happens is people go, well, I'm doing this. Nobody else is doing that. Well, if you're doing it unto the Lord, ain't the Lord going to bless you? When you stop to almost like focus on the other person, what's that? You're digging up your blessing. Because now you're not doing it unto the Lord. You're doing it for someone to recognize either what you are doing or what someone else is not doing. You change the whole motive of your service, right? See, again, stuff like that starts to impair your vision. It starts to cloud you. God was sending healing your way. He was sending signs and wonders your way. But you got in the self. You start thinking about you. you got funky, right? Right? And, and, and you, 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 and then you go, I've been believing God for this for a long time. Have you been sustaining yourself in the presence of God for a long time? Because that ultimately, that's true belief, okay? All right, so, so this is what this is saying. And then it, it, Acts 28, uh, 27, I'm just going to reference it here. We don't have to go to it for the sake of time because we're going to, I'm going to try to shorten this. 
Um, it says, for the heart of the people is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. It's repeated again. So look at, the, look at the progression to healing. Healing is not just as simple as, you know, is Pastor Mel anointed? And does she have her oil? And will she lay hands on me? Look, look, if you're, if, if you're dull or if you're impaired, you can miss out on your healing. How do you get the infirmity most of the time? You didn't got caught up in the flesh, right? Or in unforgiveness or some type of offense. So the adversary has access. He's seeking whom he may devour. So he's seeking what he wants to attach onto you, right? So when, when you start to get weary and well-doing, and it's easy to do, especially when you're operating in levels of service, it's easy to get weary and well-doing, right? It's, it's easy to, to lose sight that whatever you do, God has you. Whatever you do. And that's, that's you know, I, I, listen, I didn't skip service to be a pastor. I served. I served diligently. I served consistently. Um, uh, my wife was talking to somebody the other day, and they were saying, well, she, she had talked to the first lady. My wife had called the first lady a year and a half ago. She said, I just want to let you know you, was, you, you meant a lot to me, and you had an impact in my life. It was like a few months after I had called the pastor. He didn't return my call, but at least she got to talk to the person. Um, and and could have been busy. I don't know. But when she, when she told the young lady, she says, I told the person that she was a blessing in my life. And the person said, it was mutual. She says, huh? She said, it was a mutual. She said, all that you guys gave, you guys were consistently faithful for all those years. You grew, you produced fruit, and we partaked of it. But, but you never wavered in your faithfulness. And know how I looked at it? I don't care how long I was serving. I don't care if I was here at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. I don't care. Actually, y'all don't know this, but, you know, I, was, I, was, I know that they had to get some stuff done. I was trying to figure out how to get it. I didn't know y'all already had did it, but I was figuring out how to did it. I just done it myself. You know, a couple years, me, we didn't put no posters, post this up. Me and Marcus was over there getting stuff together. We didn't call nobody or nothing. You, you, you see what I'm saying? But what, we're keeping our heart right because if I go through something, I want to heal it. Listen, my hip was hurting and, and, and hip almost back. And it was, it, was, I was, it was a struggle to get up. And, you know, I love playing basketball. And I was like, well, it might be over. But I just kept my heart right. God healed me. Right? So, so, so God wants to heal us. But we, got, we have to keep our hearts right. Right? And this is, and, and this is why it's important because... There are, t there are two platforms to stand on when it comes to healing, belief and unbelief. Two platforms to stand on, belief and unbelief. So either the word is true or it's not. So if the word says, uh, Zippor Anderson, if the word says to you, God is not unjust to forget your labor of love, you have a, a choice at that point to believe is that true or is not. Right. Or if it's true, then you say, well, if I'm operating in the labor of love, which, you know, I'm on this, you know, I'm on this. I've been hearing from God about people because of the, I, I have an assignment. Right. But if 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 God is what God said is true and, and a person has been faithful beyond regular faithfulness, behind the scenes. People don't know behind the, I know some stuff. People don't know some behind the scenes. What, what is, if God says that, then that's how you live, right? That's how you operate, based on what God says, right? Right, if you don't believe what God says, right, it's kind of hard to receive from God. So faith is a, deci a, a decisive act. We have to understand God will do what he promised or not. But this is the thing. Do you believe God's promises? Because we're in the kingdom of God. That's the only reason we came to church. Right? Because we believe in the, the promises of God. You know, and that's why under other, other countries, I show you the Billy Graham films, where they press because they believe God. 
And if a man of God shows up, they go, oh, oh, we, we, we coming to get something. I'll, I'll share this in a, an, another teaching coming up, but I was talking to a man of God this week, and he was saying, this uh, a female minister, she goes overseas, went to a church, and it was, uh, the parking lot was empty. She was like, man, ain't nobody come to see me. Walked in, packed, thousands. So she talked to the pastor, she was like, where are the cars at? She said, oh, he said, oh, these people walk to church. They got cars, but they walk to church. They walk, they walk miles to church. They got to get the word. <laughs> we got cars and we struggle. As a young lady came back, she said, us Westerners, we in trouble, man. Because any t anytime we feel the work we're doing, we start to trip. Something is in us tells us we ain't supposed to feel no work. We ain't supposed to feel no discomfort. And these people press. That's why they get their healing. They pay a price for it. See, see, they abandon their feelings to get from God. I got to get from God. The most, most important thing was God. Right? But we, 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 we do so, uh, the pastor we talked to today, remember he was like, he said, you know, he said, I was at a church of thousands and was so busy, people were so busy about their little dot and I's across and T's, they boxed out the Holy Spirit. Didn't he say that earlier today? Um, so, so look at Psalm 27. Psalm 27. And, and the, the, the teaching, I know I'm, I'm kind of all over the place. I've been all over the place for a couple days here, y'all. So, so y'all can be all over, over the place. So, Pastor could be all over the place too, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Don't be looking up here at me. <laughs> I just wasn't focused. Okay, he was Pastor could be all over the place too. <laughs> just use the same lenses you want me to look at you through, right? All right. So, Psalms uh, twenty-seven. <laughs> That was all over the place too, wasn't it? Psalms 27, 13. It says, uh, uh, it's one of my favorite scriptures here. Uh, the, we're in my favorite psalm. It says, I had fainted, I had given up unless I, look. The key words here, underline it, Psalm 27, 13. See, y'all cannot, no, I'm just playing. Psalm 27, 13. It says, look, look, look. It says, I, I would have fainted, which means I would have given up, unless I had and you underline, circle it, highlight it, believe to see, believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He said, I would have given up unless I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Key word, believe to see. And see, so the gospel of healing hasn't gone anywhere. The gospel of healing for the body hasn't gone anywhere. You know, what, what, what is the gospel of healing? I am the Lord who heals you. That's what the gospel is, the good news. I'm the Lord who heals you. But it's of no value to those who will not accept that the promise of God is real and, and they're acting on it. See, the thing is, like, it's, it's, we got to know that that's what God promised and act on it. Right? We got to know. And the interesting thing, I've been, I've been studying this. In every aspect of our life, this is how we think about sports. That's how I play basketball. And you know what I say? We say everybody plays basketball. So I have a lot of relationships because everybody plays. I didn't say everybody was good. Everybody plays. You know, so lawyers play. You go to the gym, be lawyers, doctors, all types of all walks of life. People are showing up at the gym. You know, you've got Chris out there trying to play basketball. So you know everybody plays if Chris trying to, right? <laughs> right? So, so <laughs> that's, just, that's just, just picking with them. Right? Well, guess what? Everybody has some aspect of their life relates to healing everybody whether it's physical whether it's mental whether it's heartache everybody everybody has some connection to healing the interesting thing is some people have a connection here and don't even realize it some people are ill and don't even recognize it listen to the word some people are ill but don't even recognize it some some people are ill mentally you know, it's, it's the, the way they process things, or, or if you always are thinking negative, you know, you, something's not totally in line, right? 
if you're always defensive, something's not totally in line. You, okay. Do you realize, because we're all family, but do you realize dealing with pornography is, is an illness? Do you, do you realize that? Okay, so y'all don't, don't want to believe pastor. All right, so check this out. It's when babies are born, the reason why they feed them so fast, the babies aren't hungry. Actually, if you don't feed a child, the baby will not starve for food, will not eat and die. So what they have to do is create an appetite in a baby so they would crave for food. So they feed the child food and it triggers the, uh, the dopamine chemical in your body. The dopamine chemical in your body creates a craving. So it has you craving stuff. And so a lot of times when we, when, and what happens is, if, so, so what they do is they keep feeding the baby right. The, the, the baby's consuming food. And now it triggers the dopamine. Now they're addicted to it. But they want the child addicted. That's why you have dopamine. Same thing happens if we food with us. Same thing happens with porn. Same things will happen with uh, alcohol and drugs. And what happens is if, if the dopamine is abused, you still crave, right? But guess what? You go blind, you lose a sense of right and wrong. That's an illness. Like you don't know right from wrong. Listen, do you know people or that's on porn have lost homes, lost jobs? I knew a dude, he was working for a, a major company. I almost said the company, I didn't. He was working for a major company and all he did was hit one button. He was tempted, hit the button, and, the, and it broadcast throughout the whole company. Wow. I'm talking about CEO of everybody. It just, you know, because it was all networked. Wow. Another guy, top employee, is caught in a park in his car. Don't, I'm not going to say what he's doing, but I'm just saying. Why? All because of porn. People with great gifts throw them away, spend their whole day, their whole day on that craving. Same thing happens with people on drugs, right? Yeah. Throw away everything. People be trying to give them advice. Look, they don't have a sense of right or wrong. It's an illness. People are in need of healing. You see what I'm saying? But we just, we walk around like we ain't ill. Like we don't need to be healed. It's an illness. And some of us, like I've dealt, dealt with a lot of, uh, I've tolerated a lot of pain in my life. I'm not supposed to be tolerating no pain. Because I have access to redeeming power of God. I can be healed for every ounce of pain that tries to attack my body. And so can you. Every ounce of pain. That would be the heartache too. That would be the heartache too. That would be the depression. You can be healed. You don't have to tolerate that. Yeah, People have you walking around almost like a, a campaigning. Yeah, uh, my depression, not my depression, but you know, be my depression, my bipolar. You know, like, they, like they, how is that so easy to confess? But what God says, by your stripes, you're healed is not easy. He says that like, like, which one? Whose report shall you believe? Isaiah 53. Do you believe the report of the Lord? It's so easy for us to casually. And then people start introducing drugs and we go, oh, yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. I, I mean, I believe God and all that, but I got to take this drug. Why are you taking a drug? Because somebody, they said this drug can help. And how, do you know it's going to help? Well, they said it'll help. They who? What the doctors? Doctors know. Yeah. Dr. Jesus know. Dr. Holy Spirit know. But we don't go, ho, 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 dude. The words say this. I have to operate this way because of what the word says. But we'll say, I have to take this medication because of what they say. Now, why do, they, why do, they, why do these lawyers making all these money on these, on these commercials? Uh, if you uh, have taken whatever, I, I don't want to say, we'll just make up a name, uh, Dopersack. If you, take, 
if you if you taken Dopasac, if you've been taking Dopasac for the last ten years and you've uh, had bleeding ulcers or have uh, had headaches or night sweats, haven't been able to sleep, uh, you have a case. Call Jimmy Brown and Jimmy Brown, <laughs> and we'll get you some money. We won't get you healed or cured. Uh, you'll still be walking around with that that limp, but hey, you're gonna be paid. Suffering. Well, see, on the back end, they tell you after, after you don't have the surgery, right? All right. So, so I just, I just, just, I said I, I, I promise I wouldn't be long. All right. So this is the key. The key is sometimes we don't get our healing because we gotta have faith and we gotta understand and we gotta, we gotta soak up the word. That's why Jesus went to the town and he preached and taught. And then the scripture says one time, when he went into his hometown, it says he didn't do mighty miracles. It says right after that, he started preaching and teaching. So it wasn't like, man, it ain't working. It was, oh, they ain't believing. See, Jesus never prayed uh, uh, pray for somebody and was like, uh-oh. Where the fire at, man? There should be some fire coming out this bad boy. No, Jesus actually... Oh, you ain't rolling with no faith. But he still didn't disqualify the person. Not a problem. I got something for you. <laughs> I, hey, 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 take three of these and call me in the morning. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? He preached and taught is what the scripture says. All right. So just as difficult, just as it is difficult to bring an unsaved person to a decision about receiving Christ before there's a clear knowledge of God's promise concerning salvation, it's just as difficult to bring a person to receive healing before they, for there's a clear knowledge of God's promise concerning wholeness. See, if a person have a clear knowledge of God's promise concerning their wholeness, which is salvation, their, redemp their redemption, healing. Right? It's kind of hard. You can say, hey, I don't know. Jesus will heal you. <laughs> okay. I'll take your word for it. Right? That, that's the person that doesn't have a clear knowledge. When you say Jesus can heal you, man, what was I thinking about? You're exactly right, man. I'm just going to Jesus. Not I'm going to the medicine cabinet. You understand what I'm saying? I, I, li listen, that stuff for a lot of people because we're, uh, we live in this human world, I, I know it'd it, it be relieving symptoms, don't it? Sometimes. Sometimes it ain't relieving symptoms. Sometimes the pain just, pain is kicking aspirin and everybody else in the butt. You, 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 <laughs> you take pain like, please. But we, it's for symptoms. It does not heal you. Right? Sometimes without the symptoms, it's easier to believe because the symptoms ain't talking to you. Right? But, but, but that stuff don't heal you, okay? That stuff don't heal. When I, went, when I broke my arm and it was in a Z, they set it in place. They did not heal it. They just set it. When I broke my patella, they wired it together, but they didn't heal it. It healed because God designed it to be healed. They sewed the tendon together, but they didn't heal it. You see what I'm saying? Each, each of these incidents. See, see, and, and, and I say, okay, so, so you see this pinky? That's how my arm was, this arm. The difference between the pinky and the arm, I went to the doctor so they could set this. This was never set. Yeah, it was just never set. <laughs> it's it's I, actually, when I get older, I'm, I'm gonna look back like, well, yeah, it is. You just tore your body up just for, just for a game, <laughs> right? But, but the thing is, what, what I'm saying is, it healed. This pinky healed. It just healed crooked. It healed. So, so the doctors have a have a a, a a a benefit. They set my arm, so my arm's not crooked now. They had to re-break it. See, they did their job, but they didn't heal me. They just kept it in place. So when it healed, which it was going to do anyway, it healed right. <laughs> so a lot of times you have men and women of God in your life. All they're doing is setting you in place. So you can heal. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. Yeah. So it ain't really stepping on toes, Venetia. It's just, you know, sometimes you got to be broken so you heal properly. <laughs> 
All right, you see? All right, I got to stay with my time here. All right, so, so, so we must realize that if a person's mind is confused or if they have not, not fully taken hold of the promises of God, there's no way to survive or resist temptation to doubt the supernatural. See, there's no way to resist it. The, 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 the doubt is going to keep coming. Supernatural is going, supernatural is talking, but doubt is screaming. It's a, it's a, the doubt is packed house. Supernatural is your cousin, like, right over here. You know what I'm saying? But if, if, if you don't, if your person's mind is confused, it's going to be hard for them to believe. For this reason, a wise soul winner or administrator of healing does not press for a decision, right? Quickly. Like, even if you're winning the soul, like, you just can't be, like, bum-rushing somebody. You need to get saved. Read this track. Come down the aisle. <laughs> I mean, they may come down there, but you just, uh, we, we, you created a black slider, right? Right? We used to see people used to do that. Uh, uh, John 3, John 3, 16, uh, John, whatever, you know the scriptures. Come on down. Hey, look, everybody else saved. You better come on down. Come on down. No, no, that's pressure. That's not revelation. Same thing with healing. You rush somebody without taking your time. And sometimes we don't take our time because we're in fear. They might not believe me. So I gotta hurry up, hurry up. Okay, well, you probably, you, you, something wrong with you, hope, but it, that's why I ain't take. You know what I'm saying? Like, but see, I'm, I ain't talk to you. I ain't take no time. I didn't even wait on the Lord because the Bible says lay hands on no man suddenly. We got to take our time. So you, when you're at the altar, take your time. You ain't got to rush. There's no, you ain't, you, everything, that's fear. That's not faith. So the deliverer, the, the, well, the conduit doesn't have faith and the receiver doesn't have faith. There's not an atmosphere for healing there. There has to be an atmosphere. You see? You have to be an atmosphere. See, see, that's right. We're we talking about healing faith for the last couple weeks because God's going to heal some people this week. So, look, there's some people, I mean, ain't nobody going to have to, ain't nobody going to, Z, I'm telling you, listen, listen. Ain't nobody going to have to lay hands on them. They're going to get in the atmosphere and start screaming, I'm healed. Some people will yell out, they can see. You'd be like, well, you've been seeing the whole time. No, 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 I can see, see. My mind is clear. It's clearer than it's ever been before. Some people don't know they've been carrying weight. Weight in their mind. They're going to show up and I don't know what's going on. Minister Jackie, I don't know what's happening. I just feel different. Something's been lifted off of me. I can't tell you what it is, but it's gone. But they wouldn't have known they even had it if they hadn't have been in the presence of God. Because sometimes we have a way of tolerating it, carrying it around. Like, 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 well, once it attaches itself to your hope, ain't nothing you can do. No, 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 no. Cat, man, man, lay aside every weight. And the sin is so easily possessed. Man, let that stuff go, man. No infirmity is supposed to be hanging out with you. See, if you know what God's promises is, you walk different. You talk different. You expect different. You don't just, like, this ain't normal. You know, you start saying to yourself, hold on, this ain't, no, this ain't normal. Hey, look, look, Mr. Sammy, this ain't normal. This ain't God. God? Like, 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 I, I watch these kids. Mom? What you going to do about this? This ain't right. We need it. God, listen, I, I don't know what you're going to do about this, but, but this ain't right. Like, uh, the, uh, he's in the situation, uh, customer services. Oh, my God. You know what? I think, we, I think I'm in the Stone Age. There is no customer service. I, I, I told her, I think I may, I may, like, offer my services to go around and train people on customer service as a consultant. I probably can make a tremendous amount of money. I probably, they probably send me all over the world because there is none. I'm talking about like, they can't even think. Like, oh, I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm sorry, that was, that was a situation. Anyway, when I was, I told the Lord, I'm a, yeah, I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I said, you know what? I said, man, that's, this is some weird stuff. And I said, I said, I said, man, uh, one night with the Kings, I know it's gonna be powerful. I said, but Lord, you gonna have to deal with that other situation because I, you know, I got to go to church. <laughs> That's what I, was, I, was like. I said, well, Lord, now you're going to have to handle that. 
you got to work out whatever favor I need because I, I can't. I, I got to go to church. <laughs> like, like, you promised me some things. Right? That's how, the, the, listen, that's how we rolling. Like, uh, I was talking to, I, if, if, if it, I'm trying to like keep, to keep to the time, right? I was about to tell the story, but you know. All right, okay, so I was talking to, <laughs> like, you see how you bait them? See how you just bait them? All right, <laughs> look, 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 wasn't a whole lot of resistance, right? I was talking to, uh, uh, again, another man of God, and, and I was, uh, and we were talking about uh, uh, the churches and what we're believing for as far as the church, and, and I told him what we've been saying consistently at the house, like, babe. It's on God. Like, like, you know, you're waiting on over here. Listen, we, look, we ain't had no money and we had all these buildings. <laughs> we got the money and we waiting on the building, you know? <laughs> As I, I, I was talking to a pastor about that. I said, well, you know, I just want to let you know, like, the, the people are uh, believing for a building. Thank God they trust me. Because it'd be like, hold on, dude. We ain't going to. Is there, real, is there really a building? <laughs> right. So, so anyway, I was telling this guy that, and I said, you know, I said, man, we were just saying we trust the Lord. So then he told me his story, and I, I won't get into all the story, but he's a, uh, you know, he ended up playing uh, top college football and professional football, and he said, you know what I did? He says, I was in a situation where they forgot about me. No, literally, they had forgot about me, but I was the better guy. He said, now, some of y'all may know this and some of y'all don't. Y'all looking forward to knowing this. If you are playing top college sports and you are, let's say you make the start lineup, not only do your team know, the world will know. You know why? Because on the video game, it has who's starting. <laughs> so he said when, it, when he looked at the video game, he wasn't the starter. <laughs> he said somebody else was. But he said, he said, Lord, Okay, if you do this for me, man, I'm going to be thrilled. If you don't, I'm still going to be thrilled. I'm enjoying my moments. He said, I'm enjoying my moments because if you don't do this, you got something else. And he was, because that's what me and Pastor Mel was saying. Well, make a long story short, he said, my whole life changed. I, I'm, you know, we're going to do something with the men. I'm going to have him come out here and give his testimony. He said, my whole life, he said, no, when he said his whole life changed, not, because I, I got to play. No, my whole life changed. I, just a little while ago, I'm a high school player. Now I'm, front, I'm in front of, I, I found myself in front of some of the greatest people in the world wanting for nothing. Like, out of nowhere, God changed my life. I was looking at it like, like I told you today, like, like, like I'm watching somebody else's life on TV. He said, I believe God honored my humility to say, Lord, I don't care how it works out. I'm going to still have joy in the moments that you are allowing me to participate in. Right? And see, when we believe of stuff, especially when we believe for healing and stuff like that, we got to understand, like, our life is way beyond our comfort. Way beyond our comfort. Listen, that woman with the issue of blood, she's in the Bible, Z. Z, I know you appreciate your pastor, but guess what? I am not mentioned in the Bible. I, I know that shocks you. I know you've been looking for my name, but guess what? I'm not in there. Actually, nobody in here is in the Bible. But she's in there. But would she be in there if she didn't hold on to her faith? If she didn't believe? If I can just touch him? You, you see what I'm saying? Like, those people in the Bible for a reason. <laughs> right, so she's, she's in there for a reason. Okay, all right, so. I'm doing good, babe. I'm, I, I, I promise I'll be done. All right, so. Uh, all right, so, so, so there's a preliminary work of the spirit that needs to take place in the heart. There's, in, there's instructions we must, must receive to take on our, 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 uh, 
our redemption, our full redemption. Like this is, this is the kingdom life here. Uh, was teaching, I'm going to bring back a teaching from a while ago, the heir's life. But there's a, there's a kingdom life here. And then you live in a kingdom different. You access things different in the kingdom. And so if you, like who in their right mind would miss kingdom class? If you knew the power it would produce, who would miss kingdom class? See, because when you're missing kingdom class, you're going to stick with the same natural man habits you've always had. Kingdom class stimulates you differently. Has your, uh, uh, I got the whole uh, dopamine thing. I was watching this guy. That's his expertise because, you know, because it's something I have to teach you soon. So, and he was saying, he said, he said the interesting thing, when, when the dopamine goes overboard, he said, you can change it, but you got to feed it. A new appetite. Listen, ah, oh, you got to hear that. You can change that that out of control habit, but you got to feed it a new appetite. See, before you feed it a new appetite, it's it's out of control. Like you can't control it. It's out of control. Like it's out of control. You can't even. You don't know right from wrong. Everybody on the outside looking at you like you're an idiot. They can't nobody tell you nothing. You rebellious. You, you got a hard heart. But what it is is you've lost your mind. Like, I'm saying this respectfully. I just want you to understand this. So you got to feed a new appetite. That's why the Bible says meditate on the word day and night. That's why it says meditate. Because what it's saying is you got you to gotta change the appetite. See, see, what, now I didn't know, I've never known this. But a lot of the things I've cut out in my life, it was the whole, it was God. I changed appetites. When I wanted to stop eating uh, crazy stuff, I just drank water. I never said I'm going to stop eating Oreos. I just drank water. And then I, guess what? I had a thirst for water. I said, I learned this in, 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 in training uh, basketball. Your mind can only be on one channel at the same time. So I said, you know what I'm going to do, Z? I'm about to change the channel up in this piece. I'm going to feed my, my mind the word. And, and I watch this. I watch, ooh, the intangibles. I watch this. I talk to people. I tell you this. I'm around people all the time. And I go, listen, now, I'm a pastor. I get it. That's why I, I study and I prepare and I try to hear, uh, hear from God for you guys. Try to hear, God, what you doing in her life? Where is she going? What's going on now? What, what's happening? I do all that. But guess what? I'm reading that word because I need to get myself together. So when I'm at the gym and between my sets, I'm reading the word. Now, I can tell somebody that they could be with me at the gym and, you know, they won't be reading the word between sets. Listen, to it. Listen I'm not putting nobody down. Do you understand how subtle it is? Do you understand how subtle that is? Listen, everybody uh, exercises different. My point is... Let, let, let me tell it this way. When you can, when, you, when you're just sitting around in space, you could be reading. Doing the commercials. It's the same commercial. Same, I was going to say the names, but same commercials. You could be reading. Yeah, that idle time when you're just sitting there staring on the bed early in the morning. Anger went nowhere. You could be reading. Huh? Or in the middle of the night. When you wake up, you can't go back to sleep. Wouldn't that be like a hint? <laughs> to read, right? But how many people sit there and be staring at the wall trying to fight to go to sleep? Just when you could be feeding your spirit. I guarantee you go to sleep quicker because the devil like, man, I mean, put them to sleep, man, because they get, they're getting too much information. You understand what I'm saying? So this is what this, this is saying. You start, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When you get the word of God, listen, healing is not that hard. Let's, let, I'm telling you right now, to administer healing is difficult if you ain't in the Word. Because it's all faith. I, I, these are, you got ministers, you got up-and-coming ministers, you got people that but can minister at the altar. It ain't that simple, is it? Because you don't know. Like, you're not in control of that person. You're tempted to not lay hands. I'm on this project that I'm doing this week, uh, and 
I gotta, I'm believing God through this whole thing. And this is what God told me. Man, just do what I told you to do. But I want to like, what was it? Like, when I hear what God is saying, I want to like uh, edit it. <laughs> you know? I don't know how that's going to come across to that person. What did I say? Faith. You see what I'm saying? It all takes faith. And, then, and that's how we're going to exact our healing. Okay. Um, as the scripture says in Luke 5, it says when Jesus was teaching, uh, it, says, it says as he was teaching, the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Uh, Luke 5, 17, 26. So he created an atmosphere. That's what uh, One Night with a King is about this week. Creating an atmosphere, right? See, this is you no know why because what you can man, what, what, what you can magnify, you can manifest. Listen, listen. What you magnify, you can manifest. That's what the Bible says. Think on these things, because normally we magnify the things that I greatly feared has come upon me. Job magnified it, and it manifest. Right, the thing that he worried about. So that's why you got to watch uh, your 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 which which you focus on. Like if you're sitting here, so let's say I, I'll, I'll just pick somebody randomly. So let's say Stella just sitting here for the next week and be like, I don't think Pastor Keith likes me no more. And then she just keep thinking that the whole time. Now, she hasn't talked to me at all about that topic, you know. I just don't think he likes it. You know what? I think, uh, let, me, let me pick somebody else. Uh, cinnamon pressing at a whole other level. So, so cinnamon's pressing. So now Stella goes, you know what? I think Pastor Keith likes cinnamon more. And he's going he's gonna, he's gonna to elevate cinnamon in, in the position of what I do. I haven't talked to Stella. Stella ain't even seen me talking to cinnamon. She magnifies that over and over. Then she gets offended, and she ends up leaving her position. Leaves, a, 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 she's, a, she's, in a, uh, she's a valuable piece in, in, in the, the family, right? So now we're, we're out of place. Cinnamon can't do what Stella do. But Stella done magnified it, and it manifested. How many times we are magnified? The scripture says, man, cast that stuff down. Don't think about that stuff. Think on these things. See, because we just don't need healing in our body. We need healing in the body. That's why, that's why God has called one night with a king this week. So there's healing in the body. Do you know what happens when the body is healed? You say that again. Everybody's revived. Just like when your body's healed, you can do something. I, now, I took, took an extra week, but since my hip was feeling good, you know, I was like, I'm ready to hoop. I said, no, 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 I'll just make sure I'm 100%. Try to do it like the NBA, you know what I'm saying? You know, they, they really are all right. So I'll just take another time off, right? But I feel good. I was, I was in the house, just working on my, my, my little step backs, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> working on my shot, you know, I was like, oh, oh. I was like, I think I'm ready. Yeah, I think I'm ready to go out. I'm revived. I feel good. You know, I can, you know, I can do some things where, you know, yeah, I didn't know, but I was kind of staying up here and I was watching the things I did even when I went to the area because I was in pain. <laughs> Matter of fact, most of the time I was right here. <laughs> I was in pain. You, see, you understand what I'm saying? I, what you say, Z? Everybody's revived. All right, so what you magnify... Uh, you manifest. We create an atmosphere of healing by revealing what's been done. We create an atmosphere of healing by revealing what's been done. What's been done? Atonement. Redemption. Right? Some blood was shed. Right? Body was broken. There is nothing, Alicia, you can deal with that Christ didn't pay for. Once you see it, once you believe it, now you start to operate it. You almost look at when stuff starts to flare up. Remember when the, when the, the demons jumped at Jesus? It's almost like, is he serious? No, yo, yo, this, this guy serious? <laughs> Man, go on those pigs. <laughs> right? Because I can see Jesus like, this is funny. This is what y'all responded to? Oh, he scared y'all, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, that's why y'all. That's why y'all thought y'all couldn't cast him out because he's making all this noise? Man, go on to the pigs. Like, that's how we got to roll. That's how we got to roll with everything that's coming at us from this day forward. We got to roll like, do you know who my father is? Are you serious? 
<laughs> Do you know I'm redeemed? Like, we still holding on to our old reputation when we used to be tough. Oh, oh you don't want me to go back to Jersey. Oh, oh, you know what? It's cool, it's cool, it's cool, Pastor, because this was back in the day. You know, back in the day, why do you keep bringing that up? <laughs> like, we hold on to that. How come we can't hold on to this? Right? All right, all right, all right. So the last thing I'll give you is, uh, no, it says, that's, it's, oh, that's the whole chapter. That's what I did. I see that. So Luke's, uh, Luke 6, uh, 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 Luke 9, 6 and 11, it says he was preaching the gospel and healing. He was preaching and healing. It says when they departed, verse 6 says when they departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Verse 6 says they went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. How come I just say they went through the towns healing? See, the preaching was important. Verse 11 says, and the people, when they knew it, followed him, and he received them and spake unto them the kingdom of God. So he spake unto them. Look, look. He told them, you kingdom people, and let me tell you how kingdom people operate. And it says, and healed them that had need of healing. But first he, talk, he talked to them about who they were so they could receive it. Right? He talked to them who they were. He talked to them what they had access to. You redeemed. You ain't got to deal with this. Let's get an agreement and make this thing happen. Right? You see that? That's, that's a, a, a verse 11. All right. And then the last passage I'll give you for today would be uh, Matthew 4, 23 and 24. And then we out. All right. Then I got to get back on assignment. Sorry. Matthew, what did I say? 23 and 24. It says, uh, and Jesus went about all the Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Look, and healing all manner of sickness and, and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout, went, throughout, went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers disease, different diseases and torments and those which were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic and those that had palsy and he healed them. But look at verse 23. He went about all Galilee doing what? Teaching in their synagogues. Look, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sicknesses. So it's a teaching and preaching. He stirred them up. That's why, you know, you know, we young church, younger church, we're still young. <laughs> I was like, when we was young church, yeah. uh, we, we, we were younger church, you know, you know, you know, you know somebody might have came from this church, they might have saw something on TV, <laughs> you know, we just need more moves, more moves, but we had to set a foundation of teaching and preaching. And the interesting thing about when Jesus was teaching and preaching, people were there. <laughs> people showed up. Right, so, so, so as people grow to understand the value of making sure I get the word I need so I can have the faith I need, then people won't be dealing with some of the illnesses that they deal with. They, they, you, you know, they won't be dealing with what? Some of the illnesses, some of the diseases, some of the infirmities. Remember, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. Infirmity is, is a, it's a weakness. It's a... It's an impairment. So when the scripture says you can't see afar off, as in God's eyes, you sick. <laughs> With look, my people perish. Without vision, what? My people perish. If they have impaired vision, they start to listen. If somebody loses their sight, they could potentially lose their hope. They could potentially go through depression, right? They can send, they look. They can walk in harm's way, right? You see what I'm saying? So, so if you're impaired at any level, we need to be healed. We talk about fighting the sea. That's like fighting for your life. And that's the thing. I, you know, when people are in pain, I watch them, man. I, I, <laughs> They, they, hey man, they put away that ibuprofen in a heartbeat. <laughs> you know, 
It, look, the doses say, you know, take, you know, or maybe 400 milligrams. Be taking like 1,600. I'm going to be all right. Right? How come we ain't doing that with the word? How come we, we, this, 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 how, when you feel funky? Oh, listen, some of y'all been snapping on people this week, right? You show hands. <laughs> I just wanted to see how many people. There you go, Chris. Chris had put his hands up. I had to think about it. Yeah, at least Chris put his hand up. All right, so, but, but, but the interesting thing about that, when, what you want to say is something's wrong, right? So I, I need to take my medication. The word, right? Like, like, like you know, you have to see people that, you know, they, they was in an institution and they come out and they have medication. And then, you know, the people that surround them that's supposed to be their caretakers, uh, you take your medication today? Now, don't y'all go around the church doing that. <laughs> Especially because this is, this is uh, One Night with a King. A lot of people, you know, might not be getting the right sleep. You'd be like, you take your medication today? <laughs> you ain't even take it. Hey, hey, hold on. Let's stop everything. You need to get your medication. You start pulling out scripture. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but I'm serious. We need to do that. Listen, I'm going to tell you, I went to a tryout, and I'm in the best shape of my life. You wouldn't have known it. I, and I sat down with my sister. I said, I don't know what in the world's going on out here. This is my comment. Now, I didn't play well, but this is what I said. I know I'm better than everybody out there. I know I'm in the best shape out there. I couldn't breathe, this, that, and other. She said, you ever tried letting God play for you? My sister Diane. I, I said, no, no, before that, I said, listen, I, she says, well, well how'd you, well, well, did you give your all? I said, I, I, I played to the best of my ability. She said, maybe that's the problem. You played to the best of your ability. You ever just tried giving God a shot? And at the table, I said, you know what, God, you can play tomorrow. I said, you can play tomorrow. I said, and, and she said, sometimes you got to challenge God. I said, let me see what you can do. As we speak to this day, to this day, I played some phenomenal games. I scored a phenomenal amount of points in my life. I've never seen basketball play like that ever in my life, ever. I know I was the vessel, but I've never seen it. I've never even done it. I, I've never done it like that since. I took some medication. <laughs> That's all. I just took some medication. I do it. Like, I be coming in here. Uh, she'll say, like, sometimes we be coming, we be feeling, you know, because something be hurting or this, that, and the other. But once you get to singing, like, I seen this girl in the morning. I be trying to, I be trying to give her stuff. Uh, did you take your vitamin C? Did you do this thing? She be coughing and stuff like that. Then she get up and sing. I be like, what in the world? <laughs> but, but I be like that dragon, this, that, and the other. But once I get out here, listen, y'all didn't notice. I was just, because uh, I had to rush because some things happened. I, I was just putting on my socks. I got such a cramp. My stomach was almost like out here. This was just a while ago, and it didn't look like it was going to, and it was hard as a rock. And, and so I was like, now how is this going to work? I might have to call Mr. Sammy. He might have to take over the service today. Well, I'm good, though. I had to take some medication. <laughs> so we just got to take a look, 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 I'm laughing because my wife had me laughing. She tried to do something. I'm going to tell you what she tried to do to us. I'm going to tell you later. Don't, don't let me forget. But I was cracking up. I, I was cracking up. The guy that was serving her, he started cracking up because he had the phone on speaker. But laughter does good like what? A medicine. A medicine. <laughs> all right, stand on your feet. That's all for today. Thanks for tuning in to today's broadcast. To view videos or make donations, feel free to access our website at www.heirscc.org. Remember... At Ayers, we believe we're just what you prayed for.